Good morning, everybody. It's Big Rich Moathar, and you can see it's miserably wet and rainy, cold fall morning. Leaves everywhere. You can see, let me zoom in on this. You can see the stream is getting a little bit overrun right there. And then we have a little bit of drainage right here we can maybe fill in. And then you can see over there, that's the only spot across this, oh, there too, that we leveled all that land over there. And we've got these two spots we got to still level, bring up a little bit. But look at this. Look how nicely the edge is coming together all the way across the edge of this pond. That's what I've been waiting for. It's for that to get, you know, done. We can cut off the excess liner and, uh, you know, won't have that worried about. I'm waiting for a dry day that I could air blow all these leaves down into the river and let the river take them away. Um, we've got some leveling to do over there. But as you can see, the water's getting less less blue. It's it's more greenish now. And you can see through it more. I can see rocks there, all the way across over there. It's uh, man, I don't like these cold winter fall days. I, I bring back my summer and spring. <laughs> Forget Halloween. Let's have Easter again. So, pond's coming along. Just a little update for you. Oh, and for all you people out there whining and crying about this blue dye, you know, you can all just eat me. I don't care. I put the blue dye in simply because it was yellow, muddy, murky water. It was that color right there, that yellow, that mud. Our whole ground is nothing but clay, and it rained and got this all muddy as can be. You could not see through it. Now, if this was clear water and I put the dye in it, you could still see through all the way to the bottom. When I dyed the pool two years ago, I could see all the way to the bottom of a 12-foot deep pool. The dye is not going to make it so you can't see through. Yes, it'll make the difference of you can't see 40 feet deep, but you can see 20 feet deep. That's the only difference the dye will make. You can see through to the bottom of this 5-foot pond with dye in it. But that's not what I put the dye in there for. It was yellow murkiness like that you couldn't see six inches it was horrible so what I did was for one I added the dye because it was left here It was only about this much in the bottom of a quart jar I added it here now I can throw that jar away and I don't have junk sitting around two it turned all the yellow mud this bluish green color which is definitely prettier than all this brown leaves and then yellow mud in the pond so now, the pond is clearing up because what I've got, well, I had to shut it off because, see, the fast-moving river, now it's all murky. So if I pump water in now, it's all yellow, muddy water. So for the last two days, I've been pumping clear water in that's been running through that stream and letting it overflow out. So it's just a matter of time, and then all this muddy, stained water will be out, and it'll be full of clear water. Give it time. Stop whining. This is ridiculous. You know, the bottom bottom dollar is it's my pond, and if I want it blue, I'll make it blue and keep it that way. But that's not what I'm doing. So stop complaining. This is ridiculous. Um, it does look prettier than that yellow, murky, muddy water that you can't see through. And the, the dye has only dyed the mud, not the rocks. We're okay with the rocks. The rocks won't get dyed blue. The, the mud that's in the water, that's the silt that's free-floating in the water, is is blue. So that's why you can't see through. If it wasn't for the dye, you still couldn't see through because it's the mud. Now, that's the last I'm going to talk about that. Let's move on because that was getting aggravating to me. And all these armchair know-it-alls is just killing me. If you want to help, come help. I'm, I'm glad to feed you. I'm glad to, to work with you. But just stop all this controversy over this dye. It's, it's, it's just un unnecessary. Uh, I didn't dye that pond, and you still can't see through that. It was crystal clear last week. I didn't do nothing to it. Now, all of a sudden, because it rains, it's muddy as can be, and you can't see through it. It's just nature. It's how it's going to be until we get grass in here. There's a lot of factors that you guys ain't taking into consideration. Um, I'll just let it go. Now... For the rest of my fish family that has stuck up for us, 
Thank you very much. This is this is what we do. We stick together. We we do this together. I'm just videoing to show you our process and what we're doing. Um, now the indoor pool. This is, I think it's 6:30. Um, I've already fed all the pelleted fish that I feed daily. Well, I don't know if I don't want to mention it, but Labotka had to go into there because we had our 500 gallon bust on us. But I'm sure Josh is doing a whole video on that, so I'm not going to talk about it too much. And now these are the only koi left inside, which are Tracy. Beautiful babies. What I was going to do was take these and split them up between the two tanks, but Josh wanted the electric eel in there, and I'm not too keen on that. We got to test the waters and see how warm this water stays because this water down here is 83 degrees, but as winter kicks in, the ground around it's gonna get colder. So I don't know if the heater will be able to keep it at 83 all winter. And if it does, the water that we're pumping from here, through here, down through here and back, is that enough with the heater on there to keep it, you know, in the 80s or 78-ish at least for the uh, electric eel? We don't know. Another question, electric eels, um, electricity can travel six foot. Now, the the drain going in on this one is right here, and then that's a seven foot long tank, and there's a foot and a half gap in between. So this is about eight and a half foot where the water drains into here, separated between them. But it's only a you know one inch hose. Is that going to be enough? I, I'm going to have to you know see if the electricity would travel that way there's a lot of unanswered questions you know doing stuff that nobody's done before you gotta you gotta test things out but for winter i was just going to take these because i wanted these to be there when tracy because these are or her original babies i wanted these to be there when tracy is back around with us and coherent so she can release these in so i was going to take half of them and put over there and just give them more room for the winter now these guys um we're still going to feed because they're still in, you know, 78 to 80-ish degree water. They're not going to go dormant for the winter. So I'd give these guys a chance to grow and catch up to the big guys outside. And in the meantime, we've got our duckweed growing. All the water passes through there, and then there's all kinds of other plants in there. And uh, these plants are doing good here. Uh, all these, these pothos are doing real good. Everything's doing good. Except for this one pothos plant that we can't get to to water, but we was hoping that, you know, the arms would reach down and then sprout roots into here and, and that would be enough water for it to serve itself, and it hasn't been. You know, trying new things, you, you're, you're going to find things out. So, but yeah, look at Brutus. He's always following me around, wanting some food. Come here, buddy. I'll grab you some pellets. Let's give him a treat real quick. Ouch. Now, this ain't feeding time, and this ain't what he normally eats, but when he's around, I'll throw him a handful of stuff, and uh, he, he likes it. Here you go, buddy. Come on over here. Come on. There he goes. Okay, let's get you out of the, the reflection. <laughs> That's my boy. He's so powerful. You want some more, buddy? Come on back. Here we go. <laughs> Just a little morning snack. Now you see, some people say that, you know, we handle so many tanks and we know our business, we know what we're doing, all that. Well, we're just guys with fish tanks, just like everybody else, and stuff happens. Like all these shack koi babies here. I just had to fill this back up and, you know, do a complete water change on it and that was about six o'clock in the morning because our overflow got got plugged up and we've got water passing through this comes out of the 4400 passes through here overflows out and goes into the pond i have a net there in case any of the baby shack koi get sucked through the overflow they get caught in the net i check that daily and put the fish back in it does happen so but the tank overflowed and see the carpet it's all wet from there all the way to here that's after i vacuumed it up already so it's it feels you know wet and damp on it it's going to take a day or so to dry out it's going to take the rest of the day for this to go back clear and uh you know things happen unforeseen things always happen uh, let me see this tank here is always looking good 
all these beautiful angels in here. Problem with this tank is the water level is so close to the top right here that water here, you can see it right here. When the air bubbler is on, water comes and splashes down and I have to wipe this daily and I don't like that. So we're gonna go and take and silicone a one inch lip all the way around this so that uh, it seals and then there's a one inch lip here that this light can sit on up higher and hopefully that would stop it from dripping down because this really aggravates me every day and it don't want to come off easy. I'm pushing hard here, I'll do four fingers. And see, I took off a little bit of the outside of it. Keep going. It really doesn't want to come off. Even when you wipe it with water and this and that. And on a glass tank, you take a razor blade and scrape it off. It's dried, hard crustiness. But on an acrylic tank, it's hard. You got to keep it, you know, moist and wet and keep wiping and keep wiping. So that aggravates me because I like my stuff looking beautiful. These plants are starting to grow tall. You remember when I put them in there, they were only about 10 inches tall and covered the whole bottom. Now they're about a little over half of the tank is here. So they're about 60% of the tank, the, the lights are coming up. And that's all just from this skylight. That ain't from the light, because this little light is so tiny. <sighs> okay, let's see what else. The 3000's looking nice and clear. I can't wait to get this gravel in the bottom of that tank. Where it ain't so blue, just the walls are blue and the bottom's tan. That'll help, because that's just so blue over there. And it seems like there's only one color, dark or light fish. That's it. So, but uh, you know, it's, it's doing okay and good. And then the 4400. We have a light out. See how this side's so dark? Let me back off over here. Nice and bright. There's the corner. Here's the side wall. Here's the back wall. And then you get over there and see that whole side wall is dark. Light bulb went out on the top over here and it's a 32-inch, 90-watt bulb that costs like 54 bucks. I am trying to find them like old store stock, but they don't produce them no more. And they, it's a ridiculous price, so... We've got a light out in the 4400. Makes it a little bit darker. And uh, this tank's just looking beautiful. And here's the babies. They always look good. They're getting big enough to start putting them into our other tanks. <sighs> We've got a little leak in the pool pond. Everyone talks about these Intex pools, but you know, we've probably got 90 holes in this thing that we've patched. And patches come off after a while. So we keep patching anytime we see a leak. And uh, you know, it's not even that full with a lot of pressure. It's down low right now. And it's still leaking. So Josh has to get in it today and go around to every patch and see if any of them are curling up. Pull that off, put the new patch on. And that's usually how he fixes it. Um, another way is we watch on the outside and see where it's wet. Like up behind here, if it's wet there, we can see the outside of the pool behind the stand. If it's not wet there, that's come from primarily over here. And if it's not wet up there on the side, then it's primarily coming from under here. So then, you know, we check this side inside the pool right along this edge. And usually, you know, we'll find a little poke hole or something there. And, uh, you know, then we patch it and fix it. Look at this, Abba. I am so mesmerized by that fin. I love my Abba knives. It's just so mesmerizing. It's just awesome. Oh, and then we get to see the, the little Tigrinus out. He's gorgeous. Love that fish. Now, you want to see a treat? Well, let me show you the front tosa down there. But over here, the Bellagio tank has cleared up. Both of them are, are doing good now. On just these, we had to add one more of the FX5s onto here, and it cleared it up from a, a gray ha haziness to this clarity, which is pretty nice. It's not sparkly sparkly, but I mean, it's pretty 
pretty good looking. Um, I need to order the blue vinyl to go behind there as the blue back background so that you're not getting the shade of the white wall behind it making it look darker and dingier. There's the white wall. Here's light not getting to that white wall and it's darker and dingy. So we put the blue on there and it'll look good. And now for the treat I was talking about. Let me come over here and grab a handful of food. This is going to be amazing. I love these guys. Okay, you see them. They're going from one end of the tank to the other. Let me throw some food in here. Look at that. The whole tank clears out. comes to the center like a feeding frenzy ball. Look, that tank's empty. They're all right there. That's so cool. Wow. You know, we used to give away every cichlid that came here because we weren't interested in smaller fish. We're only here to save the big fish, the small fish we can find homes for. Not that we didn't care for them, it's, it's very easy to find homes for. The big fish are the ones that we started this rescue for because, you know, the public aquariums and the, the uh, zoos no longer take from the general public. Unless you've got something super rare that they don't have they'll then think about it but for the 99.9% .9 of the time you call them up and they will not take your fish anymore so we became that center in between place to go we work with nine different public aquariums now and that's basically where all the big monsters go uh, there's a few select people with big tanks that we're, we, we work with that will come and take a fish here and there that kind of stuff of our bigger species but these little guys we never had a problem finding a home for well, once I decided, you know, we need to just start making our collection of cichlids better and we'll, we'll keep adding to it. Man, I cannot believe I didn't keep every cichlid that come through here. <laughs> but, you know, now they've had so many babies and are filling up an 1,800-gallon tank. You know, we've got plenty we can give away as they come in, you know, so people still can get cichlids from us. The overflow of cichlid babies will overflow into the pool. We're making sure we're, we're doing that now because all the little babies in here have no place to go. They might get picked off by adults and stuff like that. So we have as many hiding places in the backgrounds that we can put everywhere in there for the babies to keep on, you know, or for the adults to keep on reproducing without the babies getting to eat. And we feed it twice a day. So, um... You know, we're, we're doing okay, but I want these overflows to go straight to the pool and then we can pump water up from our inside sump up to here and have water passing through. That's what we were doing before on their tank. If you remember, all them cichlids got into the, the pool pond by the babies overflowing the cichlid tank. So whenever they had babies, the extra abundancy of babies would just go into the, the, the big pool pond and we were like, where are all these fish coming from? We were thinking they were jumping over. And then we figured out it was while they were babies, they were getting, you know, they were falling over the overflow. Now this here, look how pretty, is, I'm going to explain this one more time for everybody that hasn't heard, but this is pretty much empty. There's a couple fish in here now, like these guys. What we're doing is, we need tanks, and here's another guy, there, there's, a, there's probably about 10 fish in there, but you know, there's, they're hidden. Um, we need tanks for fish as they get bigger we need to store them into a tank as they get bigger and start picking on the fish in there we need to store them to another tank and so on well if i put fish in here that i need to take out let's go like this uh let's say right here is a tiger shovel nose i need to get it out i put a net in here and he swims 20 foot that way all the way over to here so I come down here, I put a net in here, and he swims 20 foot that way. That I cannot deal with. So we decided to turn this into the community tank, and a lot of you guys know this, but there's a lot that don't. Um, so what we're going to do is the community tank is our 1,000 gallon, and it's full of fish that people have named that are here that we're not giving out that you people can just enjoy. Like this cichlid tank, people can come by and enjoy. I don't stick a net in trying to catch any certain fish same thing with here well that's coming from over here this is our thousand gallon community tank so all of these fish 
There's Cecil. That came from Mary, the police officer, and I believe it was Connecticut or New York. Um, you know, all these fish are named fish that people have brought here, and they can come back and visit. Or at least get a video. Like right now, Mary's getting a video of her Cecil. <laughs> so, um, all these fish in here, I don't go in and catch. But, this is a thousand gallon tank. It's ten foot long, and what I can do... Let me zoom out. What I can do is put a, a, a ladder in the center, get up there, and it's open top. I can reach a net that way, or this way, and catch a fish out. So, as, you know, these little grow outs over here get bigger, I need a bigger tank. They're about, you know, what's that, 15 inches long? I need a bigger tank. I can put him over into the 1,000 gallon with other 15 to 20 inch fish and let them grow. From there, they can go to the 3,000 gallon. And if it's something we want to keep, they can go in here or the pool. So right now, all these fish here, we're going to take out of here and we're going to put into the Bellagio tank where people can enjoy them and let them grow. I mean, we've even got kissing garamis up here. Parrotfish. There's all kinds of things in here. Uh, the big fire eels. Uh, clown loaches. There's all kinds of things. Chinese algae eaters. Little parrotfish. A whole bunch of uh, Milo Schimberki. Well, that's the thin bar. We have thick bar here, too. There's the raspberry. That came from Jeff Naderer. Um, there's thin bars. There's the Milish and Berkey right there, the wide bars. Um, there's more thin bars. Then there's dotted, polka dotted. There's black polka dots on that guy. We got yellow and red polka dotted uh, silver dollars. Regular silver silver dollars. Giant garamis. That's a red tailed giant garami. Um, you know, there's just an, a, 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 a wide variety of fish. Big, huge uh, bala sharks. Albino tinfoil barbs. Um, we got flag tails in here. I love them flag tails. You know, so all these will go over there and it's going to open up a big tank for us to, to keep growing monster fish and separating them by size. That's our biggest problem. Do you see these uh, black belt cichlids back here? Them are going to eventually get eaten by this guy, the Pariva, that's growing way faster. He was, you know, half his size when they were half their size. Well, they grew from three inches to five and a half inches when he grew from nine inches to 15 inches, you know, so he's going to overtake them and eventually try eating them. So we need, we need big tanks to keep separating fish by size. Now we get yelled at a lot by people that say, you shouldn't have this fish in with that fish. Well, technically that's true, but we have to separate our fish by size. Like none of these fish here can eat each other. So none of these fish here can eat each other. Now, if we put the big four-foot red tail hybrid in here, he would eat that two-foot clown knife. He would probably eat these uh, butter barbs here. Um, that small black-eared prune shark. Uh, what else could he fit in his mouth? Oh, definitely this tinfoil barb. That tinfoil barb and that tinfoil barb. Maybe even that Giardini right there. Maybe even the Phoenix barbs. So, you know, we can't put a huge fish with a huge mouth in with fish that normal people call huge, like two foot, because they will eat them. So, I mean, we have to separate by size, not by where they came from on the planet, not by, you know, cold water or warm water tanks, because all of our tanks are pretty much warm water. So the koi aren't, aren't in their most ideal setting, being inside. Um, these goldfish ain't in their ideal setting inside, but we rescued them and now we're giving them a home where, you know, people that want them can come get them and, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, let me see. These uh, baby shack koi up here. We still got a bunch in these little tanks. Um, they're in, I, I believe it's 81 degrees in this, in this room. So they're in warmer water, which will you know, help them grow and eat more and stuff like that, but it's not ideal for them. Um, this is the 750 here. Oh, this light's acting up. Let me see if I can get it on. There it goes. Now, this is for 15 inches and below normal fish, but, you know, we can see the veil tail Oscar in there. This is a hybrid between a marble cat and a tiger shovel nose. But we also have 
these big three-foot lungfish in here, which don't go after any fish. They got a smaller mouth, and that's a West African lungfish. There's some, you know, 10-inch sun cats in there. There's even some uh, Midas in here. A, a gold clown knife. Clown knives you got to keep either one in a tank or six or more in a tank to keep the aggression down between themselves. So, I mean, we have a lot of problems moving one fish from one tank to another and then that whole tank accepting them is the problem. Um, we did just move this high shine arrow over to our albino tank. So there's a, you know, a lot going on that people don't understand and, and you know, know that that much is going on behind the scenes. Now, again, see the 4400 nice and bright on this side, dark on that side. Yeah. So I just wanted to give you guys a, a general update. This is my morning. This is what we do. This is, you know, it's going on 7 o'clock now where I'm going to have to go in and uh, feed Tracy. It's, you know, 7 o'clock's her feeding. 11 o'clock's her feeding. 3 a.m. or 3, after, 3 in the afternoons are feeding. 7 o'clock at night's her feeding. And then at 11 o'clock, i got to give her more water. And then she's gotten everything that the doctors expect her to have a day. And, you know, i got to keep... You know, changing her and taking care of her in between so it's it's pretty uh busy around here all the time trying to do projects in between um right now she's sleeping so i could walk out here a little bit i can i left the kitchen door open i can hear the monitors because i got a baby monitor on there and a, a wi-fi extender for the baby monitor and we have the speaker out here to where if the alarms go off you can hear it out here in the pool room so it's getting easier with the more more ways we're figuring. Oh, we also took this tree stump won't stand up on its own yet. It, it lays, but on its side. We took that artificial corin, coral and stuck it down deeper to where it's still here. We can still sell it. We don't necessarily want it, but it was in our way. So we put it into the pool. A lot of people complain. So now it's underwater over here and it's serving a purpose while it's here until we find someone to, to buy it and take it away. And then we took all the rest of the little coral decorations out. They're all here. These can all go to whoever wants them. But there's our little update for today and hope you guys liked it and understand a little more of what goes on around here and how and why we have to do things. And you can see that even normal everyday fish keepers problems happen to us too all the time. The more tanks you have, the more problems you have. That's just facts of life. <laughs> Don't mean to uh, deter you guys. Get yourself some fish tanks. Get some more fish tanks. Catch the fever with us. You know, it's an enjoyable hobby. It keeps you out of trouble. Keeps you out of bars. Keeps you out of out in the public where you're getting in trouble. This here is a, a nice family-oriented type thing to do, and it's an awesome thing. And you know, we have a support group for Fish Keepers Anonymous too. <laughs> All right, guys. You take care and. Above all, stay fishy, my friends.